time they see me, they ask me what I'm on. Every time they see me, they ask me what I'm on. Every time they see me, they ask me what I'm on. Boy, you know what's on. I tell them wrong is strong. Been in prison, back in prison, just to tell them how I'm living. You ain't gotta sell dope to get a pocket full of binges. You ain't gotta kill folks. I've been working on forgiveness. You can kick down the door just to show them how I'm. Hey, what's up, guys? Happy Monday. It is the beginning of the week. And we are back on YouTube. What's up, Rasa? What's up? Everybody, like I said, it's going to be raw and uncut. So you already know, if you're my family, you're here. Shut up, Rasa Budman. If you're just following, um, you would have to look at some of my stories to kind of get an idea. But we do talk about prison. We talk about addiction, uh, mental illness, toxic relationships, um, gang banging money just uh the bad the good and the ugly you know what i mean and and uh like i said i had gotten burned out from making youtube videos a while back i don't think i've i put anything up in like i want to say almost a year it might even be a little bit more but i got burnt out thinking that every time i had to put something up it had to be like fire because my OCD kicked in, and then I watched everybody else, you know, using music, using graphics, uh, special effects, all that stuff. So I started learning and, and stepping up my game, too. And it just became more of a of a job, to tell you the truth. It became a, a job. It wasn't fun no more. And at the beginning, it was really fun because people were hearing the message. Um, it was doing some good. It, it wasn't just entertaining. Because yes, you know, I'm, I hope you get entertained, but I hope you also learn something from my life and my stories and and the mistakes that I've made throughout my life. You know, because it hasn't been it hasn't been easy. But today, moving forward, I realized that I'm kind of happy that I didn't have an easy life because if I would have, I would be a completely different person today you know um when i first hit the prison system in, in chicago in illinois um my first time hitting the yard was jacksonville um it's somewhere by springfield illinois so uh, it's about i want to say about three hours from chicago but i got there and I think back then it was a, a medium or medium low because they had a lot of control movements. And yeah, they had they had bunk beds that had one, two, three, four. They had eight bunk beds per room and there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight rooms together. And there was one, two, three, three copies of that. So quite a big quite a big guy a lot of guys uh but when i got there i was young i was fresh fresh i was a baby from the streets and anybody could have been uh take everybody anybody there could have taken advantage of me because i had never been to the state prison it was this is my very first time walking into state prison have i done i had done overnighters at the police station but never state prison with like the worst of the worst, you know, from Chicago. So, um, I get there, and as soon as I get into ch my changing room, they ask me, hey, what are you? Are you Latin, you Latin folks? And, and that's the term used for uh, a, a bunch of gangs that are on one side of the street. <clears throat> um, just like uh, the California people use the 13 and the 14 to uh, set apart, uh, the gangs in Chicago have the five point star and the six point stars. Uh, the five point star means people, and the five six point star means folks. And since I was a saint disciple at that time, I was you know land folks. That's that's what they call all of those guys together. Every gang that's under that six point star is land folks. And then you have renegades that don't want to ride with nobody. And, and I mean, it's it's a mess. I mean, it's a mess in jail. It only, it's only a matter of time before the volcano rape. Uh, uh, <laughs> I can't talk. Before the volcano blows up. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it, it's inedible. Like, it happens. 
Um, if it's not for TV, it's for sports. If it's not sports for gambling, it's for drugs. It's always something. So you're just kind of waiting for it to happen. Um, the only good thing that is in, in prison, you know, is a lot of gangs that fight in within themselves, like the folks. A lot of gangs that ride on their folks are fighting each other on the streets. But at least while you're doing time, that is completely put on hold and, and it's, it changes you. Not no more. You're at peace in there. Yeah, that's complicated, guys. So here I am coming in as a little kid, you know, uh, young, fresh, and <laughs> you guys heard me talk about him before. His name was uh, Cadillac Joe. He was a Latin king from Beach and Spalding, an old school, old school Latin king from Beach and Spalding, and was, uh, you know, he had did his, his thing back in the day. He was... He happened to be my bunkie, and, you know, at first I really didn't trust him, you know, because, like, he just seemed, like, too nice, and um, I got there, and he offered me coffee, because, you know, coffee is a big, like, uh, peace offering between two people, and they're, like, uh, they share coffee, you know, and... He sat me down and just told me, you know, because he, he, Cadillac Joe was a Latin king. Um, he passed away already. He rest in peace, Cadillac. Uh, he was a Latin king from the north side, and I was folks. So technically, you know, we were enemies, but, I mean, he took me under his wing, and he explained how the yard, just how everything ran. There was a, a lot of cobras there from Chicago from the north side. Um, explain to me everything, how the workouts went, because everything's controlled there by, by your car, you know, folks, people, everything is done together, shopping days, stuff like that, everything is, is completely, you know, isol I, I should say isolation in your own group, like, um, you try to isolate yourselves as much as you can, but, I mean, you can't really avoid it, man, especially like me, when I went in there, um, I mean, I started talking to everybody, man, and I ended up being, like, really good friends with some Lane Kings, a, a dragon from uh, the the south side. Uh, like, it was, it was crazy to me because I went into prison at such a young age. I was young, right? So I went in, and I, and I had, I was just used to what I was seeing on the streets. But when I got there, I was like, wow, like, on the streets, we're trying to kill these dudes that I'm sitting next to. And in here, my life depends on them watching my back. Like, that's really when I started to and and ask questions in my head. Like, how is this? How how is this gang stuff really real? Or like, how is it? Like, who does it benefit? Because obviously, it doesn't benefit me because like I'm doing the time, you know. Even though I only did a short amount of time, you know, 17 years ain't nothing. I've met people that have done 40, 30, 50, you know, uh, ain't nothing. It's, it's it's a hobo sentence. Um, but learning to live like that in that environment was what made me today who I am. Here I am setting on sitting on uh, Cadillac Joe's bed. And man, man, for real, like, he was big. He used to wear this 2X sweater that was like worn out because I had been in prison for so long. And he was just, he was swole. He was a swole, swole stash. And he was short, short little Puerto Rican, man, but like a bulldog, bro. And, you know, old school. He was just giving me, telling me what, what's up, man. And, you know, and I, w I wish I would have listened, but I didn't. I didn't. And uh, you know what the crazy part is about this whole story is uh, when I came home and I started my YouTube stuff and I started making videos, I made a video about him. And I forgot who reached out to me. It was a staff member from, from a senior retirement home in the north side of Chicago. And uh, when they reached out, 
I thought it was, I thought it was, I thought it was a joke. I thought it was like, cause I get a lot of like weird emails. <laughs> so like, I thought it was a joke. So, uh, I brushed it off for a little bit, but then something in my heart told me, you know, uh, just, just call. And so I emailed, gave my number, blah, blah. I ended up getting the call. Um, the staff was like, yeah, I work here. Um, we have him here. He, you know, he's he talks. He, he knows about you. He remembers who you are. Uh, but he's in and out. You know, he was already uh, viejito. He was old. You know, um, when I when I met him, and I was a kid. He was like forty something years old already. Um, so I got I got put on the phone with him, man, and it was just so. <laughs> It was uh, the second person um, I had made proud in my life, you know. Because right, right when I spoke to, to Joe is right when I got on my knees and I got saved. So, like, <laughs> it was God forgave me. And then Joe, I got, I got to talk to Joe. <laughs> and he was, I could hear how happy he was on the line. And just tell him, hey, tell him, tell him, tell him I used to always mind my own business, man. Tell him, tell him. Tell him. And I'm like, man, Joe, I just, I, I wanted him to know, <laughs> even though I stayed on the wrong path, that to this day, I didn't forget him. And I think that's what it is, is that even like you keep doing bad, right? Or you die, you die doing bad. Or eventually you change and you do it even at the last minute you're always going to remember the few people that gave you a hug that gave you advice that just showed you some love and even in the smallest ways even just like that how you know Joe offered me a cup of coffee calmed me down showed me the rules not to be nervous uh, stand my ground you know be be what I had to be to survive in that jungle, you know? And it's the same thing out here. This is a jungle out here. And it's a war that we can't see. Spiritual. It's not a, It's not flesh and bone. It's, it's not. Fancy cars, big jewelry, a lot of women, uh, different women. Like, even the, f like, food. But you always remember... That guy that made you believe in yourself, even if it was a little bit. I think that's why I do what I do. You know. He uh he passed. I think he passed right after COVID. If I'm correct. I'm not sure. If I hopefully if the staff at that place watch this video or see it or eventually see it. Maybe they could send me the information of where he's at, where he's buried, or, or what, because uh, it would be nice just to say hi if I'm in town. Um, so, what else we got going on? We got going on and wrong strong right now. We are doing the prison thing. We're teaching these uh, inmates how to become personal trainers. Helping them build their social media. Pretty much just getting them ready so when they get home, they're ready to go. They're ready to rock. Ready to work. Um, and not just get discriminated about felonies, all that stuff. Tattoos, blah, blah, blah. So we're doing that. Um, the books are a little expensive. About $100, books, $100 per book. And then the test is $299. So we, we have a GoFundMe. But we're actually also looking for a lawyer to help us do the paperwork for the federal number. We already have the other stuff, though. It's a good standing, the uh, the Wrong or Strong Ministries. But we need the federal number to be able to give to people that give big donations. Um, if anybody knows anybody, please contact me, email me at jcfit.com. 
monster180.com. Uh, what else? About to launch my US, oh, excuse me. About to launch my USP self program. No, I said it wrong. USP Max, it's a self building program that is from the heart. It's, uh, it's not a get rich program. It's not a how would I get famous on YouTube or likes or Instagram. No, it's it's uh getting ready to be rich program because you once you're you're healed, you're you're operating at a, on a whole different level, and it's all everything mind, mind, body, and soul. It's everything. Like it's you have to heal in order to be the best version of yourself, and the best version of yourself has to be healed in order to be disciplined and discipline and builds that character. Um, it's taken me years to get here, guys, for real. Like, I would have never seen myself, you know, well, I've been out now for, what, six years? I would have never seen myself six years ago saying this or doing this. Um, my maturity level this year has, like, grown a lot. Uh, my relationships, my kid. I just I was on my phone with my kid yesterday. I haven't seen. I never even met the kid. Uh, he lives out in Florida. Um, name's Rudy. He's my son, and because uh, I have all girls, I have all girls. God has a sense of humor. <laughs> so uh, I was talking to him this morning, and you know, and um. I I just can't believe how much God has changed me, changed my life, and, and how much he's been the one opening the doors to all this. The the TV shows, the this book that I'm about to launch, the program, um, all these things, even a, a coffee line, if you believe that. Uh, we're going to have some real coffee from Mexico straight from over there with nothing in it. <laughs> and then we'll have a special Colombian one, but... It, it, it's all coming together slowly but surely because there's a lot of work to do and you know we're not a big team we're we're uh, we're a group of about 15 individuals my wrong strong team omar dean uh robert um castro flaco um julio who am i missing john uh, my boy in Holland, uh, everybody, everybody, you know who you are. Uh, you know I'm gonna, I'm not good with names, but all the wrong, the strong team is all doing this, and you know it's it's a team where we got a podcast, we got the daily uh, Bible devotions uh, study on Fridays. Remember the links? I'll leave the links on this video for everything. Um, we're working on the clothing line. You could get with uh, Castro on that one. I'll leave the link on that on his Instagram. The clothing line. I'm about to launch my book and the coffee and the USP program. The USP program is is more articulated because uh, it took me my whole life to write it. And there's things on there that I did that, that I had to do in order to get to where I'm at today. Uh, in every aspect of my life, that means, you know, health, you know, work, everything, everything. It comes with a workbook and a journal that it's a 90 day program to a better, you know, like a, a, a better version of yourself in prison. Because I tell people, even out here, you have to live like you're still in prison. Like you still have to follow a schedule. You still have to, you know, live life like you don't know if tomorrow's going to be there. It has to be like that in order for you to really taste and take in life. There's no such thing as um, I'm just wing it or I'm just. Uh, like, yeah, I could see it. There's days like that. Like today, I wasn't feeling good. I didn't go to work. Uh, I slept. I read. I winged it. I canceled my whole day. But I needed this today. My body needed this today. All I had to do is do this video. I'll upload it. And I'm back to sleep again. But you have to follow schedule. You have to train your body. Everything has to cost you just a little bit. And that little bit months to a lot. And once this is healed, that's when the real money starts to come in. Because now you're disciplined enough to cut vices off. I'm not going to have that Starbucks. I'm not going to eat this. I'm like, now I saved, you know, $8,000 that whole year that I cut that out. Now I can use that as a down payment. Stuff like that. That's the way we're supposed to think. 
But remember, we weren't taught that because, you know, that just didn't exist, especially in my culture. All my culture is go to work, pay the bills, be happy that you have a job. That was it. I've always wanted more. That's why I ended up selling drugs. <laughs> but I always wanted more. But my work ethic is beyond normal. So all that could be taught, though. Everything. Everything could be taught. It just has to be taught the right way. And we're not all these big words because obviously we're not college nerds or, or, or builders or whatever. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just saying uneducated. Let's just say it like that. But hey, everything can be taught if you practice and do it with consistency. <sighs> that was long. <laughs> so, anyways. The topic was kind of like Joe taking me under his wing. Two things. Don't ever be afraid to hire a mentor, a coach, a trainer. Whatever you're lacking in, don't be afraid. Because if you're lacking in that, that means that's a superpower that you need to sharpen up. A lot of people that come to me for training... They don't lack making money or nothing. They they already have that, all that. But because they've done that their whole life, they've lacked their health. So now I come in and I help them align all that. So think about it. I have the best job ever. I'm the last mechanic to come in. After the car, the Ferrari's already built. The wheels are on. Everything's up and going. I just have to come in and rotate and align the tires and we're good to go. Now it takes off. Because remember, a car that runs with unaligned tires, it runs, but it's not a nice ride. And that's what I mean. Everything gets aligned together. The pain, the hurt, the ego, everything. It's healing and self-care. So, yeah. Hey, my name's JC. I told you, raw and cut. I'm not, this is how I'm doing it. I'm not going to be doing videos. I'm not going to be doing flashy dances, green, green screens, none of that. I am going to keep it real just like this, of course. And that is it. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Sean Frazier, wrong and strong. 2021 takeover. We here in love and memory of DMX, Earl Simmons, R.I.P. Kato. Love y'all.